New York okay. University. Okay. There we go. Uh, she comes from Serbia and she has an undergraduate degree from the University of Belgrade. Uh, she received her PhD degree from Columbia University, then joined Bell Labs, followed by Carnegie Mellon University, uh, where she was uh, Hammers like university professor and head of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and also faculty of the Biomedical Engineering Department. Uh, Yelena is a world-renowned expert on signal processing and data sciences. She is an authority on multi-resolution techniques such as wavelets and frames. Her research work cuts across diverse domains such as uh, biology, medicine, and smart infrastructure. For her research, she has been recognized with IEEE Signal Processing Society Technical Achievement Award the Dowd Fellowship at Carnegie Mellon University, the Belgrade October Prize, and the EI Jury Award uh, from Columbia University. <clears throat> she has co-authored a number of award-winning papers and is co-author of the textbook uh, Wavelets in Subband Coding and Foundations uh, of Signal Processing. Uh, Yelena is a fellow of IEEE and was editor-in-chief of the IEEE Transactions on Image Processing. She has been keynote speaker for a number of meetings and has been involved in organizing numerous uh, conferences. Um, Yelena is the first female dean of en the engineering school um, at uh, New York University since uh, 2018, when she became a dean. Um, she has achieved amazing things, including raising the visibility of the College of Engineering and has done also amazing things in diversifying the student body. And uh, I'm sure she will tell us more about this. Yelena? Thank you, that. Athena. This was amazing. Um, I first want to check, does everybody see my screen? I started sharing. Yes. Yes, OK, great. Um, well, um, now an official good morning, uh, afternoon, evening, everyone, wherever you are in our new world. I am very excited to be here and I wanted to thank uh, the organizing committee, especially Athena and Farok for inviting me. Um, this talk is part um, is based on, on in part on an opinion piece I wrote for the point of view column of the proceedings of the IEEE in uh, October 2017. Um, so uh, let me start by um, starting with a quote uh, of Malcolm Gladwell, who in his book Outliers, The Story of Success, said that who we are cannot be separated from where we are from. Thus, this long history of where I come from and what shaped my thinking is crucial, at least for me, to understand where I'm going. So it's a it's a very personal story, and I hope you will indulge me with this. Um, so what you see on the screen um, are essentially pancakes. We call them palachinke in, in Serbian. And um, my you know, dad would play these games with me, and he would say, your mom made five palachinka and your brother ate two, how many are left for you? And so for some reason, this sort of sweet math got etched into my mind as one of my earliest memories. And it was my dad playing number games with me, um, card games, puzzles, word riddles, brain teasers, anything where you had to figure out things he loved. And then, of course, so did I. I just want to show you the result of eating that many palachinka. This is me at, at age two. I can barely fit into the shoes. <laughs> so um, he, as, as I said, he played, you know, many, many other things. You know, he was just an intensely curious man. And I was just so excited to be treated. I felt always I was treated as a peer. Um, what you see here is he's wearing a Mathematica t-shirt. At the time when I was a grad student, anytime I would publish a paper in which I used Mathematica, if you send them a copy of the paper, they would send you a T-shirt. So I had a bunch of these that we all used around the house. So I grew up in uh, ex-Yugoslavia, uh, a socialist country at the time where gender equality was guaranteed, or at least that's how it sounded to everybody. 
women were supposed to be able to do everything men did. In my family, in particular, run by my fierce Montenegrin mother, um, uh, a mountainous region uh, now in Montenegro used to be former Yugoslavia, that was really fully on display. She had infinite confidence in me and believed I could do anything I wanted. And the only time I remember her being disappointed was when I sold myself short in some way. And my dad, um, to this day, the most brilliant man I've ever met, uh, was a true intellectual, was intensely curious and, and fearless. He went on to be the mayor of Belgrade and Yugoslav ambassador to the US for two years until he was recalled by Milosevic for not promoting his nationalist agenda. So instead of collecting a pension from the State Department, he resigned and at the age 59 became unemployed. And he transformed the last 20 years of his life by writing books. He wrote the first English Serbian and Serbian English dictionaries of idioms and became a linguistic authority in the third period of his life. And he also wrote books on diplomacy and negotiation and many others. And as busy as he was, he really left an indelible mark on my life. He treated me as an equal, even as a little girl. And, and that empowered me for the rest of my life. Why am I telling you all this? I was just incredibly lucky. I loved math and was encouraged to pursue it. And growing up, I don't remember a single instance of anyone doubting my intellectual abilities. Unlike many others, I had the full support of everyone around me. I was never told I could not do something, so I just went, went ahead and did it. But this also tells you that I was, you know, and I realized that I was also somewhat clueless. I looked at the world through the rosy lenses of my own experience and probably ignored jobs coming my way. Personally, that was a protection for me. So for example, when I saw the attendees' jaws drop when as a fresh PhD graduate, I delivered a tutorial at a major conference, I thought it was funny. I did notice though that I was one of only two women PhD students in the um, E department at Columbia in the late 80s. And I did hear, hear an occasional, you know, she got the job because she's a woman comment, and I just ignored it. So what really, gives me the credibility to talk about this. You know, must I be in the know because I'm a woman? Uh, while my perceptions changed gradually over the years, I really think the turning point for me was becoming the EC department head at Carnegie Mellon University, because it was now my job to take care of the others. And so I spent numerous hours talking to students, faculty, staff, alums, parents, you know, I started noticing comments in meetings. I heard heart-wrenching stories of girls who didn't make it into engineering, but against great odds. I looked at numbers and was shocked to see that at the time we were only about 20, 21% women undergraduate students. And so in other words, I started educating myself. I attended the Leadership Academy for Women at Carnegie Mellon. I read articles. And none of what I learned and none of what I'm going to tell you, of course, was new, but some of it was new to me. I mean, women were discouraged and rejected from STEM long before I started noticing it, despite isolated examples of celebrated brilliance. You can think of Marie Curie. Um, you can think of the incredible African-American female mathematicians who were described in hidden figures. Hedy Lamar, an American actress who invented spread spectrum and many others. But even these extraordinary women faced incredible obstacles. Marie Curie was not initially included with French physicist Pierre Curie, her husband, and Henri Becquerel on the list for, for her first Nobel Prize. To fight for her, male advocates were needed. The Swedish uh, mathematician Magnus Gosta Mita Gleffler and Pierre Curie. In 1911, she was denied the seat in the French Academy of Sciences, losing the election by two votes only. Ironically, the same year she won the sec second Nobel Prize 
one of only four individuals today to win more than one Nobel accolade. Katherine Johnson, who worked on flight trajectories during the space races in the 1960s, NASA engineer Mary Jackson and supervisor Dorothy Vaughan all had to fight both gender and race stereotypes just to be able to do something that they were extremely good at. What um, on, on this slide you actually see um, on the right, Marie Curie in a mobile X-ray vehicle during World War I. She came up with the, the idea and equipped 20 such field units that were affectionately known as Petite Curie, Little Curie Curies. And on the left, you see on, on the bottom, that's Katherine Johnson, a NASA mathematician who calculated trajectories for a number of missions. And I'm sure most of you have seen uh, uh, the movie Hidden Figures after the eponymous book, uh, profiling other African-American female mathematicians of the time. And on, on top left, that's Kedi Lamar. <laughs> So what is really surprising, I find, you know, is that this still happens. So evidence of gender bias in STEM fields really abounds, you know, from the prestige gap. So the prestige is weaker than field, but, but more important. Uh, it was measured by the National Research Council. The fact that women are still paid less than men um, at the time that I wrote the column, this was 65K for women to 79K for engineering graduates. Um, to the fact how female and male entrepreneurs are described and funded. Um, there was a study in Sweden on how uh, venture capitalists ju judge male and female entrepreneurs. Uh, and you can see here on the slide how what the the adjectives are and what comments were made about the average male entrepreneur like young and promising for the female that would be young but inexperienced for the men it would be arrogant but very impressive competence for the woman it would be lax network contacts and in need of help to develop her business concept you can see sort of how the same attributes are described completely differently for for men and and for women and we send such biased messages all the time right if i didn't tell you i don't know if it shows here these are the um, front the covers of girls life and boys life from september 2016 really do do we really believe that girls only care about hair and makeup and boys only about planes and computers i mean don't mean to misunderstand me i actually love clothes and makeups and romantic comedies and all this stuff but i love math and science and languages and music and many other things so why are we being pigeonholed you know both men and women into specific just drawers if you want 